something that has been in my heart ever since I was a child, and that has been to bring healing into schools. And I have my whole life been obsessed with this vision, this dream of just bringing this infinite love and infinite potential into children's lives. And in, it's, been, it's been there, and, and so I've been seeking how, and, and things show up. And then in 2017, I meet Dr. Joe's book, Becoming Supernatural. And in three months, I'm in Santa Fe. After I watched Progressive all Christmas long, yes, I put my cell phone down, I did everything, I just stared at it, and I watched it, I took notes, and I'm like, oh my, th this is it, this is it, this is gonna teach me how, how I can have this vision. And so I get to Santa Fe, and I remember being like, just overwhelmed, just so like, whew, oh boy, this is big energy, this is big, but the teaching is so clear and the formula is so clear and from the initiate to the master, the, it's, it just takes constant space repetition and the study and the, and I know that and I've been there and I knew that I had to go home and do the work and, and I was convicted with that and I, the mind movie, all of a sudden I had to make a new one. And I had to write out new, everything I learned in the book. I, I love Dr. Joe's story about his son where he didn't have the job and he didn't have the money. And Dr. Joe's like, well, you know, you know what to do. And I was like, yeah, I know what to do. So I wrote out the letters, what I was going to do. And I put the energy circles around them. And then I read that journal and I watched my mind movie and I'm attracting the people who want to do the work. I'm, I'm attracting the teachers, the leaders, the children, the families, the communities that want to do this work, to bring this potential into schools that when we would help teach children to be in that pure positive potential and change the programming that happens in children's lives. And so I started going, I did the work. I did meditations every day. I started to feel a little lost, but I did the work. And I, I work in very intensive, needy environments, uh, American Indian reservations. Uh, some of my communities, the average lifespan is 29 years of age. Um, I have to, whew, breathe most days because the stories the children tell me or the families tell me, um, and I think, Okay, but I, I, I'm doing the work, I'm attracting, I'm attracting it. It's, it, I know, I just trust. It's trust, having faith and not fear. And um, so things started to show up. I ended up being in a meeting with a woman who was doing an NICHD study, a National Institute of Child Health and Human Development study, on um, Native Americans who were at the end of life. And they, they were given that final... Uh, diagnosis or this is the end and ask them questions would you change anything about your life and they all said yeah I would live it entirely differently I would live it in the state of love and I was like well there it is um, we all know this we all know this pure potentiality exists in that eternal present moment and, and the quantum has all those potentials why couldn't we teach all these children to choose that, and in what I would hear in generational trauma, all of these things would come up in all the meetings I was in. Uh, the focus would always be on the problem, not on the solution, not on the potential. And so I would flip the, flip the dialogue and people would all stare at me, oh, there she goes again, here we go. And, and then I felt defeated again. I'm like, okay, no, just keep doing the work, keep doing the work, and on January 1st, I got a uh, download in a meditation that I was supposed to meet this mentor and the next day I write an email and within three months I, I meet this person and they're like Danielle you need to clarify everything you want in your vision so and I'm like I thought I did that and I really thought I did that and I must not have because it hit me it was very clear that I started to speak it bringing healing into schools transforming children's lives through bringing this teaching into schools and changing the program and children, teachers, families. I just start, it started to unravel and come pedal by pedal, as Dr. Joe would say. And, and I was 
watching my mind movies and in my mind movies I'm attracting the people who want to do the work and I started to show up at schools where teachers teachers that I dropped the stones and the ripples went and they saw that I carried I carried becoming supernatural with me um, some days I would read it during breaks and um, teachers started reading it and uh, one day, a teacher comes to me and shows me the frequency chart that's, you know, to everywhere, everybody, and then to nobody, nowhere, no time. And she goes, well, how, how could we teach this? And I'm like, huh, how could we teach that? And I just got this rush, you know, that, it, that this is, it's, it's coming. It, it's coming. And, and I am watching the movie. I'm doing it. I'm putting the letters and the energy and I'm saying how it's going to feel. What I didn't know at that time was a box meditation. Um, and I now do. And so things have changed even more. And so I, I problem, I, I look at that and I think, how could I bring this into the classroom, the classroom of four or five-year-old children? A teacher who has now read Becoming Supernatural is now doing the meditations. So I go home that night, I go to bed, and I just pop out of bed like in the middle of the night. I'm like, why am I awake? And my phone's off, I turn my phone on, and the only thing that comes up is Cancun, is just opened. I go, I think I'm supposed to go see Dr. Joe again. So I got on, and I got in. <laughs> and and I, I'm like, holy cow, I, okay, I guess I'm going to Dr. Joe again. And, and I look at my calendar and I say, uh, oh, no, I'm supposed to climb a mountain that next week. It's all good. It's all going to be fine. It, I'm supposed to be there. So I go back to the classroom the next day, and I said, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to Dr. Joe again. And, and now, but I also think I've come up with the uh, how we're going to do this part. And there's this, this routine. It's called the baby doll routine. And each baby doll has an emotion on it, calm, frustrated, happy, joyful, and children sit in a circle and when they're feeling something that could possibly be a trigger where they might have a meltdown or um, we talk to them and we say so how are you feeling and, and they go well um, I'm frustrated or I'm mad and, and we're like well you want to go grab the calm baby and come grab the calm baby and how's it gonna feel when you feel calm? And then the children say things like, well, when I feel calm, I'm gonna go out and play. When I feel calm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit in the bean bag and, and, and they just say things that just help them feel better. They're four years old and, and we're, we're helping them speak how it's gonna feel. How's it? And it's, it changes the energy of the classroom just like that. And so, Teacher Kim is like, okay, so we just went from this emotion up to this emotion. And she has drawn, she has drawn on the whiteboard the frequencies. <laughs> She's labeled them. And they can't read frustration and these words, but they're like, huh. And so they're seeing it, creating this mental model, this formula for children to say, I can go from that emotion to that emotion, and I, I, I feel better, and I can now have I can have what I want. And that might just be that they want to go out to recess. And before they were having a meltdown and it just didn't feel good. And, and so we were like, yes, breakthrough. And, and, and it, I have videos of it now and it's just so powerful and, and seeing children shift. And I go to Cancun and I hear Dr. Joe and he's like, you know, my dream is to go into hospitals and, and bring healing to children in hospitals and not touch children. And I just started crying. I had never heard Dr. Joe say that. And I, I was like, oh my gosh, my whole life, I just wanted to bring healing into schools and, and just be present with children and, and feel, feel that energy lift from their life that comes from generations of story that they don't even need to have. And I just started crying and, and, and my vision just became clearer that it's okay to have a vision that big. It's, it's actually the most incredible thing to be possessed by a dream, to be, to be so in love with my future self. And in that moment, I go into a meditation and I see my past self and my future self. And, huh, and my past self is a Native American woman praying next to a teepee. And all I hear is, may there someday be 
But may there be a time someday when we don't see color and we don't see race and we don't see division, but all we see is love. And uh, my future self shows up. And she's this woman with long hair and a ponytail, and she's surrounded by children. It's an actual scene in my, my now self life. Oftentimes, children just surround me when I come and hug me. Dr. Nell, Dr. Nell. And, and she's, she's with them. And then she looks up, and she's like, ah, come on. And, and I'm out of it. I'm out of the energy, and I'm like, whoa, what was that? And I had never, ever experienced that I'd never, and I knew, it was just, I knew. And uh, I went home, and things started to just speed up. I, my mind movie, I have the people show up, the scientists will show up, the leaders will show up, and I get asked by the State Department if I'll write a document for a new law we have in our state, and I say, sure, I'll help out. And in doing that, I have to uh, make some phone calls, and one of them is to a group of researchers at Harvard. And I say, so do you have this tool that we could use to help us help children earlier? And that's really part of the process for me, is like, all these things are showing up because it will all help bring more healing into the schools. And they say, you know, we don't have it ready yet, but we would like some children from places like where you live, Montana. And I'm like, really? And they're like, do you know somebody who could help us out? And I'm like, I suppose I could. And they're like, send us your CV. So I do, and they're like, well, you're a little overqualified. I'm like, I'm not overqualified. I am in the right place at the right time, and this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And so I do this work, and right away, just finished, just this month, I realized that ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to go to Harvard, and now I'm getting paid by Harvard to do work with Harvard, to do real research, to help us understand and identify early indicators for at risk, and to help teachers understand more how to help children, and more healing, and more healing. And then the next thing that happens is within a week of me being done with this project, I show up at a conference, and the man walks by me, and I feel his energy, and I look up, and it's this famous researcher that I absolutely respect and admire, and, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's him. And it, it, it's like, saying it's like Brad Pitt or something. And I, I just stunned. And I stepped, and he must have felt it. He turned around and walked right back at me. I just put my hand out. I introduced myself. And I said, I watched you receive the Distinguished Scientist Award at this conference last year. And I'm so honored to meet you. And he goes, no, I'm so honored to meet you. And then we have this short dialogue. And he goes, do you have dinner plans? And I said, yeah, actually, I do. My friend just canceled. And we have an open seat. We would love to have you. And that night, he tells me about even more tools that have just been created to help us further identify children earlier with at-risk indicators, of which all to me says, the more, the more I do the work, the more it shows up in the most interesting of ways. And it's not a process that's over. But I just know that being possessed by that dream and knowing these potentials are out there. And when I'm in the frequency, I meet up with them. And they start showing up everywhere. And now I see it in the teachers I'm working with. I'm just dropping stones. And the ripples are going and in classrooms. And we have evidence that in classrooms where the teachers are doing this work, children are doing better than in classrooms where teachers are not doing this work. And and that's profound to me. We're measuring social emotional indicators, academic indicators, uh, teacher e efficacy indicators. Like, are they happy doing the work? It, it's, I'm so grateful. This divine intelligence that is in all of us that's healing us and to connect to it. And so and that's, that's just what I wanted to share. And it's going to keep, keep getting better.